This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your girl Keisha King and we're back again. Thank you so much for viewing with us today. I am so excited that you're here and I'm really excited that we have a special guest with us on set as we discuss Hollywood and diversity. Our special guest today is none other than Stephen Hill. Hello. Aloha, How Stephen. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thanks. Okay. Stephen, you are with the latest show right now filming in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Tell us what show that is. Uh, Magnum P.I. Magnum P.I. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And what, <laughs> <laughs> what character do you play? I play the role of T.C. T.C. Yeah. Awesome. So, as a few people here know, I've been referring to T.C. as the helicopter guy. Mm -hmm. helicopter guy but it's mm -hmm. TC played by Stephen Hill mm -hmm. and I am so glad you're here how long have you been here uh, maybe about six months now yeah yeah, yeah. that long yeah yeah we okay. are we are filming episode 17 yes you know so yeah. it takes about a week to uh, film an episode we had a break so yeah about six months about six months mm -hmm. that is a good long time yeah yeah so have you become acclimated to Hawaii and our lifestyle? Um, I think so. I went home for the uh, holiday break um, for about a, a week and a half, mm -hmm. and uh, I was ready to come back after three days. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where is home for you? New York City. New yeah. York City. Well, I go back and forth between New York and Jersey, okay. which is how I also grew up. So. Oh, okay. Neat. So an East Coast friend. Yes. Okay, so I'm also from the East Coast. Okay. I went home during the fall, okay, and it was so beautiful, right? Because mm -hmm. the leaves were changing mm -hmm. and all that good stuff, and it felt kind of nice. Yeah. My last day, day there, it got so cold. I was like, "Please yeah. get me out of here." Well, I was looking forward to um, going home and putting on my coat, mm -hmm. you know, because before I booked this job, I had just bought this new fall raven coat, and uh, you know, it feels good when you're in the winter and you got the proper coat on. Mm -hmm. It's cold mm -hmm. outside, but you're still warm. Right, right. Um, so I was looking forward to that. And then when I got home, I went and put my, threw my coat on, came outside, it was 65 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so I was sweating, you know. Uh -huh. So I think I brought the uh, Hawaiian sun with me because then when I left, it got mm -hmm. cold again. Uh, it was warm see. pretty much the whole time I was there. Wow. So yeah. that's good. You bring good vibes only. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. That's Took some I of that aloha sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. We are so happy to have you here on the island. We have a, a, an array of events that always go on throughout mm -hmm. the city and throughout all the islands, in mm -hmm. fact. Um, I have watched some of the episodes. I'm shocked that there are 17, though, because I mm -hmm. think I missed one or two. So oh, I yeah, go back. The, we're still filming. So okay. uh, we've only aired, I think the last one was 12. Okay, yeah. okay. 13 I don't feel so should bad. Come, 13 will be on this, this coming Monday. Okay. Yeah. What night? Uh, Monday night. Monday night. Monday at Monday 9, night. 9 Eastern. Okay. And uh, here in Hawaii, I think it comes on at 8 o'clock. I think yeah. so too. And it's 8 o'clock as well in uh, West Coast time. Okay. Pacific. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. So for all of you who are not familiar, shame on you. How could you not be familiar? <laughs> but you can catch them on Magnum PI on Monday nights, 8 o'clock. CBS. CBS. Yeah. That's right. Got to get it in there. You know, and it'll, you know I, I downloaded the CBS app and mm. I watch it that way. Okay. Know, okay. I haven't watched live television in quite some time. but. Well, you're on yeah. live right now, so yeah. hey. Yeah, <laughs> but cool. you can't watch it because you're here, so I yeah. get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Well, good, good. So, in addition to that, I know that you've done some other work, some mm -hmm. other, um, I want to say some short films and things uh, like that. A million short films. Mm -hmm. A lot of NYU films, a lot of student film, a lot of indie films. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, one called Rights that I actually just put on my Facebook today, no, Instagram today or yesterday at some point, mm -hmm. um, that is streamable on uh, Amazon and okay. a couple of iTunes, a couple of other platforms. Mm -hmm. um, I have a show on Netflix called Maniac right uh -huh. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am in the film Widows, which I think is still in some theaters oh. uh, with Viola Davis and Liam Neeson. Oh, yeah, so. nice. 
Yeah. What was it like working with the Viola Davis? Well, she wasn't, we weren't in any scenes together. Mm -hmm. So I actually didn't get to work with her. She was on set one day, um, but I, I was waiting. I was trying to wait around my uh, trailer mm -hmm. to see if I could get a little glimpse of her, but um, uh, I didn't get to talk to her. But she's a really nice person. She will chime in on your Facebook page. Oh, really? Yeah, she's done that a few times. And I'm like, wait a minute, is this Viola Davis, Davis talk? You know? Be Viola Yeah, Davis. yeah, she will. She's, uh, she gets involved with the, uh, with the black acting community, the theater community. Yeah. And um, she'll have something to say. She's always encouraging as well. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I think it's wonderful when we have such great actors, such as her, Denzel Washington, mm -hmm. and others, that will um, kind of reach back and mm -hmm. help the up-and-coming actors. Yeah. 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 I remember recently there was a speech from Denzel, maybe a couple of years back, mm -hmm. and he was just so helpful. And he said, if it wasn't for this person, there wouldn't be you. And if it wasn't yeah. for this person, yeah. and it was, he just went down the line of so many greats. Yeah. Well, I do know um, uh, that Denzel, he uh, took in Omari Hardwick at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, he was couch surfing on Denzel's couch, <laughs> you know, um, and uh I remember reading something where Omari's first check he gave to Denzel, and Denzel has it like framed in the house or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Um, and then also uh, Chadwick Boseman um, and uh, Susan Kalichi Watson, who's on This Is Us. Okay. Uh, I know that Felicia Rashad and Denzel also paid for them to go to conservatory program in England mm -hmm. um, for acting. So. You know, they've been putting in their dues and, and giving back for a really long time, you know. Right. I think a lot of times what happens is those types of things go unnoticed. Mm -hmm. People don't always know that that giving back is taking place. Yeah. And that's what makes them even more of a great yeah. Uh, person. Yeah, right? yeah. A lot of stuff goes unnoticed, you know. It's just we think we're abreast of everything because we're in our little internet uh, social media bubbles. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, I saw, a, um, I saw an article... Uh, recently that said, hey, Hollywood, Howard University isn't the only black school, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, the, or the only HBCU because, you know, typically any storyline that has an HBCU in it, mm -hmm. they're always going, either going to Howard mm -hmm. or getting ready to go to Howard, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, but, you know, people don't know. For this show, I've done my due diligence in trying to get as much Hampton University representation as possible. Um, but I think I've decided today, I wanted it to be known that, you know, the character TC went to Hampton. Mm -hmm. But I think I want to make it more ambiguous now and do kind of like what Cosby did during the Cosby show. And he mm -hmm. wore paraphernalia from different schools. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of work on my part because then I have to get permission from each school mm -hmm. in order to do so mm -hmm. and get them in contact with CBS and, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily something that CBS wants to put in a lot of work to do, so I'm going to have to do it. Right. So, um, yeah. Let's that's interesting. If you want something done, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to do the background yeah. work. Yeah, I did a lot of calls back and forth between mm -hmm. uh, CBS and Hampton in order to allow myself to wear a Hampton University sweater or a T-shirt or to have like a Hampton University po um, poster in the background or something Right, like that. right. Yeah. So if I were a person that was able to reach out, I would simply say, um, we have HBCU Buzz, I know is on Instagram. If mm -hmm. you're listening or watching, please, he has called for HBCU paraphernalia mm -hmm. for so that he can have it on Magnum PI. So th I think that is a really good cause, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Jump on board with that. Yeah. I'm giving free shouts out to yeah. anybody who does it. Okay? And you should uh, also, <laughs> if you can, um, use the uh, hashtag, uh, check on the hashtag Stand with Bennett. Um, Bennett yes. College is uh, in a little bit of financial uh, turmoil right now where they may lose their accreditation unless they can come up with $5 million pretty quickly. Um, and it is a all-girls school, one of the first, I uh, think maybe, mm -hmm. no, other than Spelman, it might be the only other all-girls HBCU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some smart sisters coming out of Bennett College, so Indeed. Uh, we want to support them as well. That's right. And if you're not familiar as a listener with what an HBCU is, that is a historically black college and university. 
Yeah. So um, I appreciate you for reaching out like that. Yeah. I think it makes a world of a difference. Mm -hmm. And anyone who has a platform should do things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, Cosby did it and he did it very well, but he wasn't the only one. No. Um, there were others, you know, well, living single. The original TC. The original, original TC wore a lot of, um, I remember watching an episode not too long ago and he had on a Grambling hat. Okay. You know, um, I don't think his character went to Grambling or it was mm -hmm. instead, but uh, you know, People do their their job of uh, of giving back to the community. I do know that he made he was credited with helping to make Kwanzaa very popular. Mm -hmm. um, his character mm -hmm. had it was a Christmas episode of Magnum PI, mm -hmm. and his character uh, uh, was celebrating Kwanzaa, and mm -hmm. it was the first time a lot of people had ever even heard of it. Heard of it. And he put it on a large platform like that. And right. So, you know, I mean. If you have the opportunity to say something, do something positive, why not? That's amazing. Yeah. I appreciate you. I yeah. appreciate you doing that. I appreciate all the others who are going to help to make sure that this happens. Mm. And then when we come back from our break, we're going to talk a little bit more and we're going to talk about diversity, okay. but a different type of diversity, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing it a lot more in Hollywood where we have diverse peoples that are on screen, they're on television, they're on the big screen, silver screen, mm -hmm. whatever it's called, right? Yeah. So that's his world, that's not my world, I don't know yeah. it, but we're gonna talk about it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back at The Crossroads. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger and hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. That kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. Aloha, and welcome back to At the Crossroads with Keisha King. We have been talking with my special guest, Stephen Hill, the mm. actor from Magnum P.I. We've been talking a little bit about what he's been doing on the show and what he intends to do. And now we're going to switch gears just a little bit and invite another guest. We're going to invite Gina Hummer to come and speak with us. And she is a wonderful children's book author. And we're going to talk about diversity. Welcome to the show, Gina. Hi, Keisha. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. So tonight we are just talking with Stephen Hill, Stephen, Gina, Gina, Stephen. Hello, Gina. Hey, how are you? All right, good. <laughs> we are just talking a little bit about what we are, um, I'm sorry, we're talking about diversity as it portrays to Hollywood and all throughout. We have noticed that there have been quite a few people in Hollywood nowadays in our movies and um, what have you who have had different abilities such as uh, we have an actor right now on a uh, hospital show who has autism. Kevin Hart's recent movie uh, has a uh, character who is, I believe has cerebral palsy, so he is in a wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. And mm -hmm. Gina, you have written a few children's books about special needs and how it portrays to children. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Sure. Um, I'm a special educator in New York City, and um, the children's book came about for a number of different reasons. Um, one, because I didn't believe that my students' stories were kind of told. So, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's the cover. Yes, we so, can see it. Um, oh, good, 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 good. Yeah, hold it up a little so more. So, in the there cover, you, I think, <laughs> um, you have uh, different characters, and so, my students very much so we were used to reading books that didn't include what they look like or didn't include their um, different abilities 
in children's books. And it became important for me to begin to tell a story that not only included them, but to include a lot of other different characters were excluded from literacy, such as the discussion of melanin or ethnicities or religion. And we kind of, as it pertains to literacy, deal with one kind of character. And that character is usually European-American or European-centered. So um, when I came up with the book, it was to uh, look at diversity in how it should be looked at, which is in a whole kind of complex way of different ethnicities, religions, sizes, that kind of thing. So children can be seen in the stories and be seen in terms of how they see themselves within this world. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. That sounds really good. Um, having participated in some of those readings, I am very familiar with how the books typically look. And so I appreciate what you bring to the table for all students. Um, Stephen, we wanted to talk with you because you also have some experience with those who have differing abilities. Yeah, um, my, my young sister has uh, Down syndrome. Okay. Um, she's uh, low functioning Down syndrome because she was born with three holes in her heart um, and then she was too young to be operated on. Mm -hmm. So she got very uh, a low oxygen to the brain until she was about two years old when she could actually be operated on. Uh -huh. So that um, affected her to the point where she, they said she would be a vegetable, but she is not. She still walks around, you know. Mm -hmm. um, she doesn't talk makes noises and sounds and stuff, but uh, she doesn't actually talk and she can't feed herself. You can assist her in feeding herself, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, you have to take her to the bathroom, you have to help walk her to her program bus in the morning, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, so I've had a lot of experience with that and then also my mother and now my sister who has taken over from my mother since my mother passed away um, was a respite caretaker where, you know, it's actually not respite, because I think respite is when um, someone comes to your house just for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But my mother had uh, two uh, ladies from the state mm -hmm. that had, uh, 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 that, that they weren't Down syndrome, mm -hmm. but they have like, you know, some dis learning disabilities and they, um, they live with us. Okay. So I've always grown up with them in the house, mm -hmm. you know, since maybe the seventh or eighth grade. Wow. Um, so, and two of them, they're still there, mm -hmm. you know, so they're basically family members now. Yeah. Um, and uh, they live there, and my younger sister lives there. Okay. And, with, and my older sister pretty much holds down the fort now that my mom passed away, so. Wow, wow. Yeah. Well, I'm really sorry to hear about your mom's passing away. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah. It was yeah. Uh, in 03 she passed away, so it's okay. been a while now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think well, a lot of times when you are caring for someone who mm -hmm. has any type of special needs, I mm -hmm. think that usually there is one person, usually a matriarch in the household, mm -hmm. who does the primary caregiving of that person. Mm -hmm. But everyone in a family is affected. Yes. Right? And wouldn't you agree, Gina, every person has a role to play in the keeping and caring of a person who has special needs. Absolutely. I mean, but that would be for any of us, right? right? So right. that's the thing that, you know, we don't want to think too broad about it. Anybody who um, in our house, so we all take special care to take care of them. So, but I totally get what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I think what we all um, are noticing now is that when, or even in your books, you bring a certain type of awareness that maybe the general, uh, typically developing person may not have been aware of. What has the response been to your books? Oh, wow. It's been wonderful. I mean, I debuted at the Museum of Natural History in New York City um, about three years ago. I've had the pleasure of being on the OWN Network in regard to uh, the book and what we do. Um, it opened up or gave birth to the company of diversity as a verb and to make diversity more than just this kind of popular word but an action behind it. So um, the book gained a lot of momentum, especially during um, the Oscars, hashtag Oscars the White. So it worked out really well because it, it, it gave a platform of discussing many different 
um, ethnicities and groups. So, I mean, I'm really pleased about the progress with this work, uh, with this book. I can't, um, I can't extol it anymore. Everything from from dealing with melanin to dealing with um, body size to dealing with awareness, ability, sorry, dealing with awareness abilities, as well as different ethnicities. So it's worked out well. Thank you. But thank you. It sounds like you cover the full gamut of different um, differing abilities, and we appreciate that. And I thank you so much for getting the word out to so many different people about so many different people. And next time you're on OWN, you can just go ahead and mention me. Just tell Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> tell her, say, hey, Oprah, I'm so glad you're here. Um, but no, I appreciate what you do for educators and for parents. I think when I'm out and about, I hear a lot from parents how they wish that their child was better represented. Do you feel that same way? Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it goes back to what I was initially saying. You know, you want to be seen and heard, but they've said before, like I've heard this quote, where a good children's book teaches the child, but a great children's book teaches both the child and the parent. Mm -hmm. And when you have a book such as this that allows those dialogues and those discussions between each character, that allows you to see yourself in others. You know, it brings the humanity discussion into play. And sometimes that is missing from children's books in terms of understanding other people's perspectives. Right. Well, we wish you well. Thank you so much for being here today, Gina. If you'd like to learn more about what she does, you can find her on diversityisaverb.com. Is that right? Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you oh. can, uh, no, uh, it's okay. Um, you can um, find me best well on either Instagram at Gina Humber. H-U-M-B-E-R, or Twitter, which I happen to love, at Humber 720 Okay. All right. Well, I tried. You know, we'll find <laughs> you. <laughs> we'll find you. And you can. Yes. All right. And then, of course, you can subscribe to her on Twitter or on YouTube. I think I also found you on YouTube at one point. Yes. And Instagram. So wherever you find her along social media, please invest and get the word out, share, diversity is a verb. Thank you so much for being with us today, Gina. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, Stephen, we have talked a great deal about diversity and mm -hmm. as it relates to family members and in our books and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Hollywood. Have you also noticed that there is a great deal of um, diversity in Hollywood? Um, I think there's sudden? probably more diversity than uh, we care to um, acknowledge sometimes. Okay. You know, um, I think there's so much diversity that we may not even notice. You know, right? yeah. um, it's kind of like if if you if you give somebody a plate of food and they, you give them just enough, mm -hmm. they'll consume all of it. But okay. if you have a a buffet or mm -hmm. a smorgasbord of of options, a lot of that food is going to go to waste. That's right. So in this um, climate of uh, so much content, a lot of things are not recognized. So um, just to make it personal, uh, me playing this role of TC, when the original um, show was out and Roger E. Mosley played TC, mm -hmm. there were maybe a few black actors that were in roles that were, were not non-comedy roles or where okay. it was something where it was action on location sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And that was Mr. T. That's right. That Mr. was TC. <laughs> and uh, I want to say um, Avery Brooks, and okay. he was in, a, he played a, a man called Hawk, and before that he was in a show called, uh, not The Equalizer, in uh, a show called Spencer for Hire. Wow, right? yeah. Yeah, okay. so uh, outside of those three, I could be wrong, it could be more, Mm -hmm. But those are the three that I remembered being in action roles, right? right? Okay. Um, there was a lot of black comedy, mm -hmm. you know, there was, mm -hmm. you know, tons of uh, black comedy shows, but yeah. in terms of there being an action role for a black man, there weren't a whole lot of them. Okay. Now we have, uh, it's funny because you guys kept saying abilities, and it made <laughs> me think of Luke Cage, right? Because in there, <laughs> you know, they, that's how they mentioned powers, they called them abilities. Okay. Um, so. You know, on, now we have Luke Cage. Mm -hmm. You know, when, we, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, there was no 
you know, you had Steve Austin, Million, million Dollar Man, you mm -hmm. had uh, the Hulk, mm -hmm. you know, um, you didn't have strong black men, right. you know, lifting people up and throwing them through walls when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I don't think there were any black characters on, on um, Batman, you know. I don't remember right? any. I don't remember no. any. Not right? They had a guy. Not that, even a bad guy. You know, they had a penguin, but they didn't have a black man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe he count his black penguin suit. Oh, he was mixed. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, so, uh, I just feel like, um, you know, my character being on this show, that was something where 30 years ago, black audience had to tune in. It was like, whoa, it's a show with black men on it. Gotta watch right. it. Gotta watch it. You know? That's right. And now, you know, I don't know. The the conversation is more in shows like Power and, you know, in the mm -hmm. black community, you know, mm -hmm. at least from what I see. Like, you know, right. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty, still pretty uh, active on those platforms. Okay. And the things that I see people talk about, not necessarily a very diverse show mm -hmm. like Magnum P.I. Right. The show is extremely diverse. You yes, know? it is. Um, it's not a lot of black folks on the show. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I represent, I want to say, the black, black folks pretty lovely on the show. Thank you. You do a um, great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, so it's me. Um, there are Asian actors on the show. Mm -hmm. There are Hawaiians represented on the mm -hmm. show. That's right. Um, there are, uh, you know, even in diversity of gender, you know, we have our Higgins. Mm -hmm. The original Higgins was a man. Now Higgins That's is a, a woman. woman. That's right. Um, she does uh, well. Uh, Magnum is Mexican. You know, oh, um, okay. uh, Jay Hernandez is uh, Mexican American. You know, mm -hmm. so um, there's a ton of diversity in in our show now, okay. and I don't, I'm not sure if all of the audience is even ready for that. Right. You know, uh, and I and I just think that it's it's something that may fall on deaf ears sometimes. Right. So I think we are getting way more diversity than we had. Mm -hmm. um, do I think we we probably still have a long way to go mm -hmm. for there to be full equality? Right. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how soon we'll get there. Right. But <laughs> we do have a number of, uh, of, of things to watch now that we didn't. Right. That we didn't before. 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. And I appreciate them all. I appreciate watching you. Oh, thank you. Right? You do thank a great you. job. I'm trying my flexing best. Flexing out there, I'm doing <laughs> the helicopter thing. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Yeah, well, we thank you so much for being with us today at The Crossroads. We thank you thank for you. what you do as an actor. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I want to say, though, because okay. I have a little brother, and I don't think he knows this, so I want, mm -hmm. I want to put him up on game real quick and okay. simply say, I know you did something with the Wu, Wu-Tang, oh, and okay. yeah, yeah. I loved it. So yeah. can you just give a quick little shout-out about that oh, okay. as we That's close? Cool. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, it's actually a project that I put together um, with a couple of filmmakers from Philly, um, and uh, it's called Tales from Shaolin, Part One, Shaky Dog. So we basically take a uh, Ghostface Killer song. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Shaky Dog. It's on his album Fish Gale, which I think is his third album, um, but it's the second song on that album. And all of his lyrics mm -hmm. become the dialogue for the film. Um, yes. And it's dispersed through a couple of characters, mostly my mm -hmm. character, but a few other characters say mm -hmm. some, say the other lyrics, and we make it a story. And it, it kind of comes across very Shakespearean. It so does. I call it, I call it ghost experience. Okay, okay, that's new. Um, yeah, you heard yeah. it here so, first. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's it's a fun, a fun short, and um, we we turn some some things, we flipped a few things where in the song there's a woman that is kind of like taken advantage of and kind of discarded in the, in the song mm -hmm. but in the film she's totally badass you know? oh, she's okay. played by ninja devoe friend of mine mm -hmm. who came on and uh she's been on queen sugar she was just in the uh in the film um the green book okay she played a uh a uh, bartender in that mm -hmm. um and now she uh she's in our film kicking kicking butt you okay. Know, yeah, yeah. So instead <laughs> of her just getting shot and killed, mm -hmm. she is uh, is a very str a strong female lead in the, in the we film. We love that. Yeah. Love strong female lead. Yeah. We love what and you're doing. And it's free. Doing. And it's free. You and watch it's free. it for free online. That's yeah, right. Just look that's up. That's how I watched it. Yeah. So that's for my brother Mo, my little okay. brother Mo. So the so, woo forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great work. Great work. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We yeah. hope to have you back again. 
You've been here six months. We don't yeah. know how much longer yeah. you're going to be here. Bring me back. Bring me back. I'll bring you back. Not right. a problem. <laughs> We'd love to have you right here yeah. at the Crossroads. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tell your friends. You can find us on Think Tech Hawaii on Facebook. You can find us on our own website, and you can watch us on YouTube. I'm here every Wednesday at 5 o'clock. I'm your girl, Keisha King, and we are at the Crossroads. Aloha. I always begin to tell people where to find me. Ah, me too. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm telling people where to find us. Find me. No, nobody follow me. I got about 6,000 followers. Maybe. Okay. Maybe I might have reached the So weird. This is what it's just so, such a different world. Right? Yeah. yeah. I got 6,000 followers on a TV show. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then a girl with a, you know, uh -huh. girls in bikinis got uh -huh. millions. Of millions. Easily. And they don't talk about nothing. Yeah. Nope. No. There's no, they don't have anything to talk about. No personality, <laughs> no nothing, you know, mm -hmm. but they got millions.